everyone. You're welcome to this week's Business and Investment Tips program, a production of RCCG Christchurch Radio with Ayodeji Ibo, an investment professional. This week, the focus is on Nigeria's debt stock as of Q4 2022 and its implications. Last week, the Debt Management Office, DMO, published Nigeria's public debt stock for the end of the fourth quarter of 2022. The report showed that Nigeria's total debt stock, domestic and foreign, was 46.2 trillion naira or $103.1 billion. This implies a year-on-year increase in public debt of 16.9% or 6.7 trillion naira from 39.6 trillion naira in 2021 to 46.2 trillion naira in 2022. Furthermore, the report reveals that domestic debt accounted for 59.6% of the total debt stock at 27.5 trillion naira, while external debts made up the remainder of 18.7 trillion naira or 40.4%. A breakdown of the total domestic debt as of December 2022 showed that the federal government bonds was highest with 74% or 16.4 trillion naira, followed by T-bills with 20% or 4.4 trillion naira. Given the consistent rise in the debt stock, expenditure on the debt service has risen in tandem. The debt service costs in 2022 stood at 5 trillion naira, with 2.6 trillion naira and 2.4 trillion naira expended in the domestic and external debt, respectively. The huge resources being spent on the debt service, along with the associated risks, especially exchange rates risk on the country's portfolio of dollar denominated loans, raises questions about the sustainability of the country's debt. Debt sustainability refers to a country's ability to finance its debt obligations without external help. There are mainly two common metrics used to measure debt sustainability, which are the debt GDP ratio, which compares the size of the country's debt to its GDP, and the debt servicing to revenue ratio, which captures debt servicing to actual revenue in a given period. While the federal government's debt position appears healthy at 22.8% of Nigeria's GDP size of 202.3 trillion naira in 2022 and falls within the DMO's acceptable debt limit of 40%, its debt servicing to revenue ratio of over 90% in 2022 would suggest that debt is unsustainable. This means that out of every one naira revenue that the federal government earned, 90 cobra was used for debt servicing which leaves little or nothing for non-debt recurrent expenditure, not to mention capital expenditure. This reveals the persistent heavy reliance on debt to finance outstanding expenditure. It is worth noting that the ways and means which are the borrowings from the CBN, which has grown significantly in the last few years, was not reported. The federal government needs to boost its revenue to improve debt affordability amid the revenue shortage brought on by the poor performance of the oil sector. On the external front, multilateral loans from the World Bank and African Development Bank groups accounted for 48% of external debts, followed by euro bonds which stood at $15.6 billion or 38% of external debt. Meanwhile, bilateral debt was a total of $5.1 billion or 12% of the external debt, mainly split between China Exim Bank of China at $4.3 billion or 82.8% and France Agent Francais Development with $535 million or 10.5%. Here are the implications of high debt position. 1. Economy. The federal government's mounting debt means that the government's resources will be diverted towards interest payments, leaving less resources to be invested for growth. Moreover, investors may start to question the government's ability to repay debt and may therefore demand even higher interest rates, especially for external debts. A rapid increase in the rates would make the debt more expensive and achieving debt sustainability more difficult. 2. Fixed Income A higher debt position is expected to push yields up in the fixed income space, making newer issues more attractive. This presents good opportunity for investors in mutual funds, especially fixed income, as the return is expected to improve. 3. Euro bonds. In the face of rising interest rates in the United States, it is important to note that subsequent issuance of euro bonds will be conducted at a higher premium to attract investors. Although yields appear attractive in the secondary market, we advise investors to approach the market cautiously. 4. Businesses. With the federal government competing for funding with the private sector in the capital markets, investors will demand a higher premium from corporates, as government instruments are considered risk-free. Rising interest rates will limit new investments in business equipment and other operations, as businesses will face a higher cost of capital, which could harm innovation. 5. Stock markets 
A high fiscal deficit implies that the government would issue more debt securities, which could result in higher interest rates and lower stock market returns. This is because higher rates increase the cost of borrowings for companies, thereby reducing their declared profits and returns to shareholders. Additionally, higher interest rates in the fixed income market makes the stock market less attractive due to the volatility. Thank you for listening. Please join us same time next week for another exciting and insightful session. For questions, comments, and feedback, kindly look forward to abo.iodeg.gmail.com or send an SMS to 070-8246-3747. Stay blessed!